Hello, it's Lorraine Alpiard here, and I am a psychic and a spiritual medium. I'm also a spiritual teacher, and today I want to be talking a little bit to you about what can you do at home to help develop your own psychic and intuitive abilities. Now, the biggest thing that we need to remember really when we are working with our development is to know that we all have the ability to be able to enhance our psychic abilities, that we all are intuitive, we're all psychic. And the reason that we are is because, of course, we all have a soul. And with that knowing, that should be your first step, that we all have this intuitive ability and that we're able to strengthen uh, our connection to our soul, which is all knowing. And um, I've been working with psychic development um, for decades now. Um, back when I was uh, really quite young, where it started working with some really very simple development techniques. And we can do this um, just with a regular deck of cards. And you can do this with a partner or by yourself. So just by using a regular deck of cards, you're gonna hold a card up, you're gonna hold it away from you. Now you just saw what that was, but you're gonna, I'm gonna hold it away from you so you can't see. When you're working by yourself, you're just gonna take the card out of, out of the top of the deck and work to receive what color it is, what the suit is, and what number it is. Now the color is usually the easiest to get. And bringing yourself into a receptive state, you can do this by doing a preliminary breathing exercise to get yourself into a relaxed state, nice um, and open and relaxed. Um, when we do a preliminary, what I mean by that is just this breathing to bring yourself into more of a receptive state. And you can consciously work to open and expand your aura. Now, if you don't know how to do that, we're just gonna work with the preliminary steps at this time, okay? So bringing yourself into this nice, relaxed state, and you can call your guides in to help you. We all have guides, so whether or not you've actually made that conscious connection with your guides, if you're working to do that, or you have no clue who they are, that is okay because just by the act of calling them in to help you is going to call them in. And so, again, bring yourself to this nice receptive state and just working, calling your guides in and asking them to assist you and working to see what it is that you are holding in your hand. Now, as I said, you may get the color first. So we may see up in our third eye the color. You may just have a sense as to what that is. You may hear it. And, I, and work with understanding and trusting what it is that you're getting. So work with the color first. Again, this is an ordinary plain deck. And then work with seeing if you're able to discern the suit. And the more that you do it, the, the better it is it's gonna be for you. So you may feel it, you may just know it, you may hear it, you may see it. When I was working to do this, I would, um, I would get, learn to discern what the color felt like in my mind or to my, even my fingertips by holding it up and using my fingertips to get that information. But it's that conscious effort to be able to receive that. And so you're working to understand how it is that you're getting it and then trust it and then just simply turning it around to see what you got. Anything that is um, greater than chance is, is greater than half, okay? So by doing this, if you're getting even um, more than half right, then that you are flexing your intuitive ability. If you're getting less than half right, then your conscious mind is in the way, okay? And you are not, you're guessing, you're not working with your intuitive mind. And so you'll need to work more to just bring yourself to that relaxed state so that you can hear your intuitive mind more. Learn to discern the difference between what your um, conscious mind sounds like and what your intuitive mind sounds like. 
So if you're doing this with a partner, you're just going to hold the card up with your away from your partner and you're going to allow them to guess. And rather, you're going to allow them to receive. So we want to make sure that we're not using the wrong terminology because just even by saying I got the wrong guess, uh, you're not guessing. You are using your intuition. You're honing your intuitive ability. So you can say whether, whether you get the right hit or you can say you got a miss, but we're not going to say use the word guess, okay? Because that actually um, can set you up for failures, putting up these some limiting beliefs. So the way that you choose your words is actually very important also. So allowing them to take an opportunity to see if they're able to receive what card it is that you're holding in your hands. Of course, this was done, um, the Zenner cards, I don't have any on hand to show you at the moment, but Zenner cards are the original psychic development tool. I will be posting one also um, in the classroom for you to work to see what you're able to receive if you're able to receive the one that I have selected for the group. So this is a simple development tip that you can use. You can use this obviously just sitting around working to see how it is with your own ability. So this is really easy. You can do it any time of the day. Um, work to see when you're driving, when the, the stoplight's gonna change. You can sit in there at the, at the stoplight, see how many seconds it's gonna be before the stoplight changes. And then get your intuitive feeling about that and then count to see how accurate you are. So we can do development tips really easy and all of this makes our intuitive abilities stronger. When you're calling in your guides and you don't have to call your guides in, but if you want to consciously make that connection with your guides, they will also work with you. So having a good developed sense of intuition will help you in your day-to-day -day life with making decisions, with just being aware of what's going on around you. And having that developed sense of intuition is going to allow you to make good decisions or better decisions. It will allow you to make decisions based on the guidance of your own soul. And really that's what we should be aiming for and our spiritual journey is to be able to be have a closer connection with our soul with the wisdom of our soul and allowing that so this is part of awakening when we are working to do that we're becoming more aligned with the energy of our soul and so just doing this um, on a regular basis is going to help you with your intuition. If you're actively working to do psychic readings, this is a great way to better hone your skills. Another really good tool for development is, uh, is fire gazing. You can use a candle. So I'm just gonna use this one right here. And just by focusing on the flame, and allowing your mind to just be completely focused on that, this is going to help with your mind focus. And mind focus is very important because it will allow you to discern what is your ego mind, what is your conscious rational mind, what does that sound like, and your intuitive mind. And so this is allowing you to have that mind focus and just by gazing at the candle, and you can do this just for 15, 30 seconds, really simple to do, just allowing yourself to focus on the candle to the exclusion of everything else. When you're doing candle gazing, once you've gotten to the point where you're able to hold that focus, you can actually use the candle flame for scrying, and you may start to be able to receive images as you're scrying, you may, um, you may notice the flames going in certain directions and you can use that also as, as a guide. So if you're asking a yes or no question, you may determine what the candle flame direction it goes to for a yes and what the flame may go to for a no. But as I said, just by simply 
gazing into the flame, you may start to be able to be aware of some images that may occur. You may actually see it in the flame or you may start to see it within your mind's eye. And this is all um, activating your clairvoyance um, and it's called scrying. This is actually a tool that Nostradamus used to use in order to be able to get um, his predictions. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please do hit the like button and subscribe so that I may be able to um, give out more psychic development tips for you and mediumship development tips and assist you with guidance on your spiritual journey. So hit that like button and do subscribe. And if you're in the Soul Solutions group or the mediumship development group, please do participate in order to have more engagement within the groups. I thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Lorraine Appleyard and I am a psychic medium and a spiritual teacher. And I wish you very many blessings and have, may you walk with spirit. Bye for now.